1971, a quirky film took audiences on a fantastical journey inside a chocolate factory. Remember that golden ticket frenzy? Willy Wonka, the eccentric chocolatier, played by Gene Wilder, led a group of lucky kids through a candy wonderland. No spoilers here, but there are some funny, shocking, and even sad facts about this classic flick. So keep your eyes peeled as we unravel those moments. Now, here's a question for you. Is there a particular scene or moment in this movie that has had a lasting impact on you? Maybe it triggered a memory or sparked some inspiration. We'd love to hear about it as we dive into the sweet nostalgia. Share your most cherished memory or personal experience related to this movie in the comments below. Your stories are the real golden tickets here. So spill the beans, or should I say chocolate bars? Ready for the journey down memory lane? There's more to discover, so stay tuned for the unexpected. And don't forget to drop your thoughts below. Your tales are the icing on the cake, adding extra flavor to the Willy Wonka experience. Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, released in 1971, was initially met with mixed reviews during its time. While some appreciated its whimsical charm and Gene Wilder's eccentric portrayal of Willy Wonka, others found it a departure from Roald Dahl's original novel, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. However, over the years, the movie has garnered a cult following and left a lasting impact on popular culture. The film's imaginative world, led by the enigmatic Willy Wonka, became a cultural touchstone. Wilder's iconic performance contributed to the character's enduring popularity, turning Wonka into a symbol of creativity and eccentricity. The movie's memorable songs, such as Pure Imagination, also became classics, resonating with audiences and embedding themselves in popular culture. Following its release, the film's influence extended beyond the screen. It led to various adaptations, including a Broadway musical and a later film adaptation in 2005. The enduring popularity of the story also prompted the creation of merchandise, with Wonka-branded candies and products becoming sought-after items. The impact of Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory is evident in its cultural references across various media. The film's themes of imagination, wonder, and the pursuit of dreams continue to inspire new generations. The character of Willy Wonka has become a symbol of the fantastical and the unpredictable, leaving an indelible mark on the collective imagination. In conclusion, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory may have had a modest reception initially, but its impact on popular culture has been substantial. The film's legacy is seen not only in the enduring popularity of the original movie, but also in its adaptations, merchandise, and continued influence on the cultural landscape. Mel Stewart, the director of the film, aimed to ensure its timeless quality by limiting the display of vehicles. This decision was made to prevent the movie from feeling outdated over time. In contrast to the original book, Charlie's father is portrayed as deceased in the film. The producers made this change to emphasize Willy Wonka's role as a father figure for Charlie. In the book, Charlie's father is very much alive and employed at a toothpaste factory. To achieve the illusion of movement during the iconic boat scene, the crew projected footage from a Munich traffic tunnel onto the background. This creative technique added dynamism to the sequence. In summary, the film's director strategically minimized the inclusion of vehicles to maintain its timeless appeal. Charlie's father's character was altered from the book to underscore Willy Wonka's paternal role, and the crew employed innovative methods like projecting Munich traffic footage to create memorable cinematic moments. Gene Wilder, who portrayed Willy Wonka, dedicated two weeks to mastering a flip, receiving guidance from stuntmen. Inside the bucket's house, Ernst Ziegler, Grandpa George, would discreetly stash his shoes under the bed during filming. When the director, Mel Stewart, aimed to shoot a scene involving Grandpa Joe and Charlie inspecting under the bed, Ziegler, attached sentimentally to his shoes from pre-World War II, resisted moving them. Eventually, Stewart convinced him, allowing the scene to proceed. Among the Oompa Loompa cast, one of the ten members was female. These behind-the-scenes anecdotes provide insight into the meticulous efforts invested in crafting memorable moments in the film. In one memorable scene from the film, Veruca's chaotic sprint around the egg room demanded an impressive 39 takes, requiring meticulous stacking and resetting each time. Peter Ostrom, who portrayed Charlie, shared in the featurette Pure Imagination the story of the film that he auditioned by reading from the book in May 1970, as there was no script. In late July, after a successful screen test in New York City, Ostrom was informed of securing the role, 
giving his family a mere 10 days to relocate him to Munich for a five-month shoot during his sixth grade year. Before revealing the wonders of the inventing room, Willy Wonka delivered an introductory speech in flawless German, showcasing linguistic finesse. The translated speech invited the audience into the most intriguing and secretive part of the factory, the inventing room. These behind-the-scenes glimpses provide a snapshot of the meticulous efforts invested in crafting the 1971 film. From Veruca's 39 takes to Peter Ostrom's swift relocation and Willy Wonka's linguistic prowess, each detail contributes to the unique charm of the cinematic experience. The iconic scene of Violet Beauregard's transformation into a blueberry was captured in two takes. First, air was pumped into an inflatable suit, and in the second take, Denise Nickerson was stuffed into a two-piece styrofoam cutout. Maneuvering Denise in her blueberry suit proved challenging for the Oompa Loompas, causing her to crash into the wall multiple times, humorously noted by Denise in the DVD commentary as the Oompa Loompas lacking their blueberry driver's licenses. The color layering technique was in development at the time, and though Mel Stewart succeeded in turning Violet's face blue, full color transformation awaited further refinement, later showcased in films like Star Wars Episode IV A New Hope. During the shoot's final days, Peter Ostrom and Gene Wilder shared lunches, culminating in the fitting choice of a chocolate bar for dessert as they returned to the set. Notably, Wonka's literary quotations, absent in Roald Dahl's original script, were added by David Seltzer during the screenplay rewrite. These include lines from Shakespeare, Oscar Wilde, the Bible, and other renowned works, providing a literary depth to the character's dialogue. In a straightforward manner, these anecdotes offer glimpses into the meticulous filmmaking process, from challenging scenes to casual lunches and the addition of literary depth to the character's dialogue. Crafted with precision, each element contributes to the unique charm of the cinematic experience. Denise Nickerson and Julie Dawn Cole, both smitten with Peter Ostrom during the production, created a subtle love triangle. The girls vied for Ostrom's attention, taking turns sitting next to him on set. On days when they couldn't be with Peter, they sought the company of Bob Rowe, son of the first assistant director, Jack Rowe. It added a touch of youthful dynamics to the behind-the-scenes camaraderie. In an unexpected twist, Paris Themen, known for causing trouble on set, unleashed wasps from the gum machine, resulting in a face-stinging incident. The mischief added a bit of chaos to the otherwise disciplined production. Gene Wilder's iconic Wonka costume, fetching nearly $74,000 in a 2012 sale, stands as a testament to the enduring allure of the film. The whimsical outfit, donned by the enigmatic character, continues to captivate enthusiasts and collectors alike, reflecting the lasting impact of the cinematic creation. Gene Wilder, the iconic Willy Wonka, expressed his appreciation for Johnny Depp's portrayal, but disapproved of Tim Burton's remake. Wilder, known for his candidness, found the idea of remaking his films somewhat insulting. He believed Depp did well as Wonka, but the overall film did not align with his preferences due to Burton's directorial style. The glass elevator's flight over Nordlingen, Germany, adds a unique dimension to the movie's ending. This town resides within a 25-kilometer wide crater formed over 14 million years ago by an asteroid impact. The crater's edge is subtly visible in the top of the screen. Stone structures in Nordlingen and nearby areas bear speckles of tiny diamonds from the ancient impact, providing a rare geological distinction. The tinker in the film quotes from William Allingham's poem The Fairies, adding a whimsical touch to the narrative. The poem speaks of the mystical and untrodden places, emphasizing the mysterious and fantastical elements within the storyline. In essence, Gene Wilder's take on the remake, the geological curiosity of Nordlingen, and the poetic influence in the film enrich the narrative and contribute to its unique appeal. These insights offer a glimpse into the distinct facets that make the movie memorable.